The Spin-Off Podcast Network. This is Kiwi is back for a brand new season with more inspiring kōrero from special guests including rugby player, father and role model TJ Peronara. My family bring me joy. Rugby brings me joy too, but it's not the same joy as my family brings me. And global dancer and choreographer Kirsten Dodgen. For some reason people think I'm very intimidating. Listen to the new season of This Is Kiwi, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network in collaboration with Kiwi Bank. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. Kia ora, I'm Duncan Grieve, founder of The Spin-Off. You can help us keep all of The Spin-Off's award-winning journalism free for everybody by becoming a member today at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. Welcome along to the Dockless Podcast, the real pod. No dark pod. No, no dark pod. Oh, no, it's not the dockers. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is your reality TV and real life in New Zealand um, podcast. And normally we have a shared document that we work off of. And this week did not get the dock, right? So we just, we're dockless. But it's good. There's so much reality TV to talk about, including an extremely cool announcement that, like, <laughs> I just want to feast on that carcass and we, we can just let normal service resume next week, all the little segments and that. Okay, well, first of all, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Jane Yee. I'm joined by Duncan Grieve and Alex Casey of The Spinoff. Uh, and this podcast is brought to you by the lovely Nando's. I'm very excited because Joel found some Nando's Pyrenees sauce at our supermarket. So there's no Nando's oh restaurant God, here I in saw LA, that. but there's the sauce. So, baby steps. And you bought it, right? And you're putting it on everything. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Are you kidding me? Sweet and savoury. Yeah, on my cereal. Delicious mm. with Cheerios. Delicious with mm. anything. Um, so thank you, Nando's. And we have, uh, we have some, do we have any updates on the corny Christmas, which will be taking place at Nando's? Oh, just that it's all chugging along, Great. really. <laughs> what you've got to do, I'm keeping shum on the, de- <laughs> on the details. What Is that fine? About? That's what my mum does. Oh, okay. I was worried it was like maybe some old racist thing. I just realised. Oh, I mean, it's probably not Keep too <laughs> deep down. <laughs> I'm keeping Sturm on the details because we don't want to be overrun. <laughs> we don't want to be overrun on the day. So please send me an email, alex at thespinoff.co.nz. I'll tell you this, it's in Auckland. It's going to be November 18th. And it's going to be the best night of your lives. So email me and I'll tell you more. <laughs> I, th- I mean, I've seen it. It is actually, can I just right? say, can I just say it's going to be real good. Like I'm, I'm privy to a pair of docks. I'm not entirely dockless, <laughs> and they're both absolutely stunning. It's, uh, yeah, it's really shaping up to be something, so you should come if you possibly can. It's a very corny Christmas. Did we say that at the start? It's the Real Pod Christmas party, our annual celebration, togetherness, our second, our community, annual. celebrity. celebrity. Well, no. In fact, this is the year Perry, that makes Perry. it an annual celebration. Yeah. Yeah. Because last true. year it was a one-off. Now that we do it this year, it becomes an annual celebration, and so this is like a moment. Um, on the socials, a hashtag is RealPod. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash therealpodpod. And our Instagram is at therealpodpod. Uh, our lovely cornies in the Real Pod Corner, which is our very private, exclusive Facebook group, which, by the way, is where all the real news happens. So, I mean, we're not even going to bother doing real news this week, are we? No. Because... No, but we're going to do something else. Should we announce the other big thing? Hang on. I just need to, I just need to mention something quickly. It's housekeeping. Mm. Mm. So yeah. um, there's the, the corny Secret Santas happening. So you can go what? go into the Real Pod Corner. Names are going to, you know, like your names are going to be drawn on the 1st of November. <coughs> so you've still got time to get in there and get amongst it. Are you guys in there? I'm in there already. I'm in there. Paul Full. Who I'm not, I'll already. get in there. I'll get in there. I'll put it on my list. <laughs> um, okay. So Duncan, I think this is your big baby this week. Big baby. <laughs> Big baby <Yoge>. Duncan. Huge. <laughs> a beautiful bouncing bubba. Um, so long time listeners of this podcast will know that I'm like a, a total New Zealand's Next Top Model obsessive. I power ranked it back in the day. I think it's the best reality TV show in New Zealand history. And um, we've referred to it in passing a lot. It gave us Colin Mathura Jeffrey, who I consider to be, I was writing 
about it this afternoon. I think he's New Zealand's greatest celebrity. Mm-hmm. He just knows how to do it in a way that none of the rest of us do. And um, so it's been been this thing that has, has kind of been around us basically the whole time we've been doing the pod, which is also coming up five years now. What? So when we started, it wasn't even that long ago. But as of this week, it's 10 years since New Zealand's Next Top Model. Uh, and in honour of that, we're doing something which I've been like banging on about for ages and getting no enthusiasm for. <laughs> well, not no enthusiasm, no, but it would just... we've would... just had too much other stuff to yeah, watch. But yeah. now, thank you, MediaWorks, <laughs> and everyone's slashing everything... We're going to be a bit reality TV less for a while. We are. It's going to be. It's going to be thin from now through Christmas. So we're going to fill the void by. We're going back to Queenstown. <laughs> we're going back to New Zealand's Next Top Model, where it all began, and we're watching the whole of New Zealand's Next Top Model cycle one, week by week from now through Christmas. It's going to be hella fun. It is available on YouTube, we should say that. It's super accessible. If you want to find any episode, you can. it's not difficult. We'll, we'll be posting watch, them in the yeah, corner we'll as well. we'll post them in the corner as we go. So, um, so you guys have both watched episode, season one, episode one? Yeah. I've mm. watched season one, episode one, minute five. Um, it's it's <laughs> method traditionnel television, I tell you. <laughs> I don't even I know really what I really wanted to watch the whole thing. Oh, <laughs> Sarah Tetro doing the phone calls. Oh my god! On the like on slide the, up phones, yeah, shitty, so shitty phones. Oh, it's amazing! Oh, and the, yeah, anyway, take it away, Duncan. The, the, the piercings, Colin Martha or Jeffrey, just appearing perfectly formed. Yeah, wearing, like, he just military medals. descends down from heaven. A million outfit changes. There's so many scarves. I forgot like 2009. Mm. It's just like everyone had just an extra scarf <laughs> on in the middle of a summer's day, <laughs> and a little waistcoat. If you want. Oh, it should If you yeah. like it. Yeah, it was I do. Lo- and like, look, everything had epaulettes. <laughs> it was just an amazing era. Amazing era. Um, the, spon- the sponsor, Hannah's Shoes, yeah. did an integration. Got right some lovely, oh. She's provided some lovely shoes. And I have to say, all those models got in their best finery of bootleg jeans. Uh, the outfits for their first challenge thing, where they did the catwalk, um, oh, the catwalk man. modeling. There were 33 to start with, like so many, <laughs> so many. They flew. I think they must have had like a private jet. Anyway, we're going to talk about that. Um, are we going to do? That? Are we I doing it right we now? Doing it. That's what we're doing. Are we doing that right now? Well, okay, should we well, do? Okay, well, pause now. Yeah, and go watch it. Go watch it. Or how about? Should we do? <laughs> should we do? Maths oh, I think and, we should do math. I think we should. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's front load math. We were just we were just getting people excited. It's just a little oh, tease, really. Okay. <laughs> I was getting into it. Anyway, that's as far. But we will recap it on the same podcast. Just at the end. <laughs> Every week. Hey. This is so well organised. Can I, 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 I just, I know we're not doing real news, but I did go to Dancing with the Stars this week and I do think oh, that's yeah. worth a mention because it's, it's like easily the biggest, my biggest run in with reality TV by the time I hosted a reality TV show. Little, little it looks so number. massive. It was so massive. The production was insane. Um, and there were real life stars and I got a photo with Alabama Hannah, who is a bachelorette, who's my all time fave. And what was your entire whoa. conversation? How did it happen? Oh, my entire conversation was literally Hannah, ha- Hannah, Hannah. And then other people like Steve, other people Helen. and then I just grabbed her and I was like, Hannah, can I get a photo with you? I do. I'm from New Zealand. I do a reality <laughs> podcast, reality TV podcast. And we talk about the bachelor click. Camera, oh, I bet she thought camera. you'd won a competition. She thought I was absolutely bonkers, and she just <laughs> smiled. So, and then, so not true. That was it. And then I was like, "Oh, you're my favourite bachelor. I love what you've done for women, or something." And she was like, "Thank you." That rocks. Yeah, I was a that's garbled, a good conversation. Mess. I'm like that around basically everyone, but especially the stars. So good on you, Jane. I was that's trying to get her, what I was trying to do was get her on the podcast. Mm. In, that, in that four second window. I tried to get her on the podcast, didn't work. But you know, early days. It is early days. You planted the seed now. I have. I'm sure she's been thinking about it. We'll be, I did think when you posted that photo in the corner that it was um I thought it was Judge Rachel <laughs> from New Zealand. Well she was there. So so well, that's why I was confused. Jules didn't make it in time. His seat sat empty the whole time. But then Camilla and Rachel were there and they exactly. got pulled up to the front to sit at the little um little roundy tables with the fake drinks like right next to the tables oh, yeah. and fake drinks well 
I mean, there were drinks already sitting on the table, so they weren't theirs. Ah, like um, stage drinks. Yeah, and then alcohol. because they needed to turn out the audience, <laughs> like some people hadn't turned up. But then the people did turn up, and then they got dragged back to like plebe seats again. Oh no! Something to hold. I what a crazy hierarchy, eh? When bloody Camilla Sacre Dallarup is not in your top tier. Yeah, but she did like, on the way through. She made conversation with the, um, one of the judges to show that she was like in, you know? Oh, like, yeah. Hello, my old friend kind of a conversation. I love But that. they were looking very glamorous. And then I was supposed to be going for dinner with them afterwards, but I got this mad headache and I couldn't find a car park, so I dropped off my friends <laughs> and went <home. laughs> I like how you'd had a, like a double barreled excuse. It's so good. Well, if it <laughs> like had been one or the dollar. other, I probably just would have, kept, you know, pushed through, but I couldn't handle both. And it's really long, and I just had to sit side on the whole time because the, you're so cramped in there and you're in that studio for hours and hours. <laughs> Greatest night of your life. <laughs> night of my life. It, was, it was simultaneously the greatest and most uncomfortable night of my life. <laughs> um, I have some silly pretty goss from New Zealand. Mm-hmm. I was lucky enough to attend the rocking opening night of American Idiot (laughs) at the Civic. I just want to tell you, who was bona fide rocking out in the front row? Mike Putter. Oh, yeah. Can you tell me what American Idiot is? I mean, obviously, it's a Green Day album. So what has, what's, I'm not in New Zealand, so I'm not up with the news. You're not up with the news. (laughs) This very new musical. Um, It's just basically the album with, like, very it's a minimal musical. dialogue between. It is, but like if I, I talk to some people there who aren't as familiar with the the whole album because it's the whole album. Like it's like full so, Jesus well, of Suburbia, it was, it was all the whole, long. But there was it. What do they call them? What they call those albums? It's rock, a rock, o- rock opera. opera. Yeah, it's it's like it's just that basically, and they've tried to string kind of a narrative. There's kind of three men at the center of it. Who's they, by the way? Is this a local production or? It's, well, it's, no, it's, it's the much. one. It's the biggie. Okay. Yeah. It's the Civic. Oh. It's Puru. Um, <laughs> but like, I enjoyed it because I got to rock out to the songs of my of my youth, my misspent punk youth. But, yeah, if you like young men doing the fingers, I do. I love it. <laughs> 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 Put them in a I was sitting in front of better. Jeremy Corbett. Whoa. I know. Is it? I always take stock of the... The hierarchy. The hierarchy. Oh yeah, <laughs> like it. when I was sat in front of um, Siobhan Rakiri and Tuila Blakely at Aladdin, I was like, oh yeah, mm. Damn. made it. Gonna go Chris to LA Henry. and see if I can really crack it over there. Back <laughs> 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 dancing with the stars audience. It's great. Okay, um, I reckon we should try and do like fifteen minutes on each of the wonderful shows. Okay, we'll, start, we do with it? The, we'll start with the horrible show, Maths. Yeah, the let's do twelve. No, thirteen minutes on this one. So now do you see why I was so eager to chat with you guys about this last week? Yeah. Very much, very much. That was, was that the most horrible dinner party sort of set piece in reality history? I mean, it felt like I think it was was our show. It was was our version of the show made it worse, you know, because it's like, yeah, it's like, it's like when your own relative is being a dick at Christmas versus someone else's relative. Mm. And at least, like, when it's the Australian one, there's, like, this kind of level of performance to it. Yeah. Like, and their language and the way they deliver it is all kind of heightened. But in the New Zealand one, it's just all a bit shit. It's too real. Yeah. As well. It just feels like, like real yeah. people arguing. Yeah. Like, Ugh. yeah. I don't feel like... Maybe it's either that they have forgotten they're on camera, they're too drunk that they've forgotten they're on camera, or they just... Yeah, they don't have that strain of performance. So it is just, like... Painful, but it was kind of electric as well. I made Joe rewatch it when we were watching the commitment ceremony the next day in the ads. I made Joe catch up on the last night <laughs> what had happened the night before because it was just like it was essential to see how they were going to handle that, and they mm. did not handle it well. <laughs> they just, yeah, well, they didn't not handle it well. They just did not. Ha- ha- they didn't, they didn't try it. and handle okay. it. Yeah. yeah. First of all, let's start with the fact that um, Vicky and Stefan rekindled their blazing romance. Yeah, what the fuck? I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> I mean... I'm, I, I love it. You I, like I, it? I don't, know. I don't know if I believe it to be true. In the, I believe it. Form. I buy it all. I want to because I've become a, a, a total Vicky empath after that last dinner mm. party. Um, so I want nothing but the best for her because I think she handled herself very well in a very trying situation. Um, totally agree. 
Stefan. Is that what she was getting told to shush? Oh. oh, all the things. It was the craziest thing when, when Jimmy was like, Vicky, shh. And then he was like to Ray's like, get him or something. And then Ray was like, Victoria, shh, like that. And it was just like, Ugh. it was like this weird, like, setting the dogs on her type thing. Even they call her Victoria, it feels so loaded. And I, I want to, I want to poke them in the eyes, which I'm not allowed to do. <laughs> that's what I want to do. No. It's really frowned upon in, upon in PC Gone Mad 2019. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so so Victoria Victoria, and Stefan, uh, they're together now. They're, they're posting nice Instagrams about each other and so on. Um, they love each other. Like love. 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 I think... I feel like... Do you love me? Th- do you love me? <laughs> do you love me, darling? Darling? Lo- do you love me? That's very convincing. I mean, that's definitely what you do when you're in love. <laughs> I mean, it's... Yeah, we'll just see how She that does goes. kind of talk to him like he's a child. He does, well, he does kind of act like a child, though, also. So. Yeah. Maybe it's the Should perfect... Should you love your child? <laughs> Maybe I mean, it's not the perfect complimentary relationship. I mean, my one big issue with... Stefan is that he just does whatever he thinks the person who's closest to him he says whatever he thinks they want him to say if Stefan was on the push he would murder everyone within five minutes everyone. that's, that's extremely true he, would. he doesn't need anything yeah yeah exactly he just walks in and goes I got a vibe I'm gonna do it that's what you want <laughs> it would be a five second show <laughs> oh. um, uh, but anyway, good no, on but, them. But, but, I, but I believe them just because I think Victoria's had like this crazy traumatic experience of being on the show. Yeah. And, and Stefan's the source of some of the trauma in a way, like in terms of the weird, vicious casting. I also think he has some lovable elements to him, but I don't think it's like forever love type stuff. It's, it's as you say, it's like a kind of... Um, you want to protect them kind of love. Mm-hmm. It is a very like parent-child um, thing. But I will say, you go back on his Instagram, he is a handsome fellow. He's a good-looking guy. I, don't, I feel like the, the oh. maths season didn't do him justice. Honestly, go back, like if I saw his photos that were on his Instagram, I'd be like, what a babe. Well, no, yeah, but no argument there, but it's it's always been about his sort of weirdly diffident or or kind of his supremely unconfident personality, and and that um, how prone he is to suggestion, especially when he's around like real toxic dudes. But um, but I can imagine that the pair of them basically went through that crazy ringer, and they sort of are clinging to each other. Yeah. Extremely won't last. Mm. I mean, just the the way that her friends feel about him tells you all that you need to know but I thought it was quite sweet the way that they sort of rekindled after she was incredibly horrible to him at the um the vow renewal that's what dreams are made of vow <laughs> it is yeah. really maybe specific all she character to do is keep them away from toxic toxic blokes <clears throat> and uh and they they might be fine he might just grow in his confidence and find himself and mm. Bob's your uncle does that mean he gets to keep his jet ski Oh, I mean, yeah. did oh makes you think. Okay, so the the audition tape thing. Did you read about that? That was hilarious. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah. I love that. That's one of the great stories. Okay. So what did he send them instead? So what he sent them by accident was a Snapchat video of just some, I think, him out in his jet ski, like some scenery around the place. <laughs> no, no, I don't think it's even that. Like he went for a walk and got lost. Oh, what and he, like he stood said, in a was, cow pad or something and like, had a yell and it's like 34 seconds long and this is how like absolutely bankrupt they are for talent is they were like oh yeah that's that's intriguing yeah yeah, so yeah. Context, cow pad you say <laughs> Stefan's audition tape for maths he accidentally sent in the wrong video file it was 34 yeah. seconds of him from snapchat not actually auditioning so at all. Funny. So uh, Stefan. I, I don't even think his face wasn't on it, nothing. And then... Yeah. He, but the no. Video, yes. What? Yes. No, there's no, no, yeah. Just a POV was. video of the outfit. And they're like, oh, we've yeah, got our is. groom. <laughs> I'm pretty so sure psycho. if you ticked that you were a dude who wanted to get married, you got in. You're in. Right? Like, the I mean, that, sum that's total how it feels. of fellows... Who who <laughs> applied? They actually to were fellows this year. Got the game. Some of them. Anyway, the best bit is that he didn't know he'd sent in the wrong audition tape, 
until like this week. So, so there was good. there was a story that went out about him sending in like the wrong audition tape. And he even he got on his own Instagram with like, oh, that's so funny. What a stupid, ridiculous story. <laughs> and he was like, oh, no, hang on. Oh, no, I really did send the wrong tape. Yeah, because he was, he like proposed to the camera in his proper one, which has never been seen. Maybe we should try and get that for the museum. Mm, oh, my God. Just all the cow pair. A whole, a whole USB. <laughs> I don't know if there is a cow pad. I could be lying about that, but it just it vibes like there was a cow pad involved. Oh, I got some stuff for the museum, by the way. I got What'd a pom pom because it was Disney on <clears throat> Dance with the Stars. I got a pom pom that the audience were giving out, giving out to the audience um, from the High School Musical dance, and I also got a finger light that was from um, Hannah's dance to Aladdin because we were being like the audience were being the stars, um, oh my and they gosh. want they they collected all the props back. Not mine, though. Straight into the handbag. Straight, Straight into the bag. bag. Yeah. Yes. yes. Thank you, Jay. You're welcome. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> um, so we should talk about all the bad stuff. I've already kind of forgotten it all. So I, I feel like I've blocked it out of my head now that it's all done. The piece is out. We got to the dinner party. It was just excruciating. Even, like, everyone arriving was just the worst. You just knew. Because Jimmy was just so ready to rip someone apart. Yeah, he was saying that before. He's like, I'm not going to let, I'm, I'm never going to see these people again. You know, I don't know. It was like a very weird kind of apocalyptic. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going, I'm I going f- down, guns blazing. Yeah, I felt like, I, my, my the, and this could be like me being a Jimmy apologist, which I really, really hope I'm not oh, in that's it's a, a great yeah. position to be. But I wonder if he's just got a really, really exceptional producer. Because... The extent to which he was focused on, this is the last time I'll see these people and I must tell them what they, I really think of them. Like, that's not a rational way to approach a scenario. That feels <clears> like something <throat> that, so, you know, like he's got that in him clearly, but it, it felt like he'd been given that message, you know, like almost as like a challenge to his machismo or machismo or machismo, whichever it's way it's machismo. pronounced. Machismo. <laughs> wow. That's, That's something. <laughs> something to think about. Um, um, yeah. I, I mean, no, I don't think so. I you don't think so? No. You think that's just pure Jimmy just being Jimmy? Pure Jimmy? In fact, I feel like we didn't even see the worst of it. I just think I was think he probably would have got rocked up by seeing, I was trying to figure out, so... They filmed this not that long ago, so they've seen basically all of it play out, or at least the first yeah. part of it. He would have seen a lot of things that probably hadn't, but he hadn't been able to confront. What kind of things? Well, like people's kind of talking heads and stuff. The, uh, yeah. Things that people had said. Yeah, I don't know. No, to be uh, yeah. fair, not, people didn't, I mean, he was not really uh, spoken about badly that much throughout the, was he? No, nah, but he would have found all these things to pluck from Victoria yeah. and, so, and so Christopher. so much more to that story than meets the eye, I'm certain of it. He's yeah, so but it's so crazy because I watch back like when they first see each other in Fiji and it's all good. Like it is yeah. bizarrely comfortable. Like I was not expecting that. I thought, you know. Not just that. I thought the storyline was going to be there, there's still some sort of unfinished business there or something. Mm, yeah. You know? Yeah. So I don't know what happened, what fell Maybe apart, but I don't think it was. Someone got re- I don't know. I, it, it, he's just so vitriolic and, and the, the thing slut is, stuff. Like we, we haven't talked about that. But we will. Man, that was horrible. That, yeah. that was yeah. dude. That was so jarring and so disgusting. It was like, I know he. Throughout the evening, there were lots of awful things said, homophobic things, violent things. Mm. But mm. for some reason, that slut thing was so very jarring to me. Um, mm. Like I felt sick about it. And so I, I can't remember the last time I heard someone say that word and mean it like that. You know, yeah. yeah. And no. and six times, well, five times on Sunday night, six times in the non-edited version on Monday because he kind of slurred a bit. It's just, it's one of the craziest things I've ever seen on television. Yeah, because he starts off almost acting like he's got he's sort of couching it as a. You know, like she's she's like us, like like that. There's some kind of degree of distance, and then just goes all in, and like what 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 is it? Like, I mean, obviously you can't say it about anyone, but is it the fact of her having been with him and now being with Stefan? Like, well, where is his this characterization of his coming from? Not yeah. like, not that there's ever a, a place for it to be 
used mm. appropriately. No. Totally. But, but, if it's it, just, but if it came from a place oh. of her having a fling with him, did he not also have a fling with her? I think that yeah. there's a chance. He just that that, hates Vicky, right? He yeah. just hates Vicky, yeah. and the only way he knows how to express that anger is through, like, the most misogynistic language mm, mm. that he can muster. Because that's... But we've not, we've seen throughout. I mean, Emily Wrights has written a great piece um, that's up on the spin off about. It's not on the spin off. No, it's not on the spin off. It's not the spin off. Sorry. Someone I'm else wrote off. a great piece. All yeah, good. All good. Did you read Alex's piece at all? <laughs> just came out before Emily's. God, sorry. <laughs> it's fine. No, it's Alex's fine. piece is amazing. Sorry. It's all just I a just wash. Really, really, you clearly loved it. it. So just the information. What, what, did you, what was the point that you thought was the best out of that? Just out of interest. Look, I just thought that it was actually. I mean, she got Emily's some facts was wrong, really good, by the way. She got some facts wrong, so, so whoever sub, sub editing didn't quite do the edge of there. Uh, no, not no. you, Emily. Um, but yeah, no, I thought it, <laughs> it wasn't just, us. <laughs> just the whole like when you go back over the whole season, there's actually it's just crammed with yeah. horrible, horrible stuff. And we t- we yeah. talked about like the red flags with Jimmy, and then we I think we kind of got swept up in the emotion of him and Carmen. But I'm worried for Carmen at this point. Like she's I was so disappointed in her her response at the um Same. That was the one that like I actually didn't finish that final episode because yeah, me either. I found it so unsatisfactory. I think the, the, the um experts didn't take him to task as they should have. Like they talked about it, but he mm-hmm. was never really properly like told that is not okay. You cannot do that. Um, well he he took control of it. It was quite intense the way he was like I don't want to talk about that anymore. I want to talk about us. It's like, when it suits you, Jimmy, you're mm. more than happy to rip into anyone and make it about anything but your relationship. And the experts, I honestly think if you're going to go on that show and claim to be some kind of relationship expert, then it's incumbent upon you when a moment like that comes. Like, you are the arbiter. You're the referee in that situation. You must make him wrestle with it. If he doesn't want to, well, you know... That's where you're joking. That's literally why you're being paid. I think it was irresponsible mm. television. Mm. And I think the fact of him wanting to get out of it, I totally understand. But the fact that they let him is really, really poor. I actually think it even came down to Vicky to, like, bring it up. Yeah. Like, yeah. she kind of had to interject to be like, what did you think about, like, what you said to me or something like that? It was just like, I also, it was like they were going to just let it slide. I was really disappointed in Stefan as well for his kind of... I just want to be friends with anyone, everyone, mm. da, da, da. and then when he found out, kind of like <clears throat> for a fact that Jimmy did say that stuff, but he should have believed, he should have just, you know, he should have backed his partner in the first place. But when he found out for a fact that Jimmy said that stuff about the person he's supposedly in love with, mm. th- at that point, I think you've got to go right. Okay, that's not on. That's not okay. I, I don't think that I can continue this friendship with you, bro. You know, like it's not. Oh, yeah. That yeah. whole last episode was just felt. I felt like at least with the dinner party with Jimmy, kind of ex- like, like completely unequivocally exposing himself. What's going Whoa. on there? Why are you I didn't say that. That's crazy. Okay, not not physically, <laughs> but exposing his true colors. I know, I know. Okay, I mean, there, there was some satisfaction in that, like, uh, there's Sorry. no way anyone now can be on Jimmy's side. Like, you have to know that he's a bad, bad man. At least the he's th- exposed. And that the hope was that the following night, he would then be taken to task over all this stuff, and it just didn't happen. And I think that's that's exactly why it was such a strange and unsatisfying end to it, because, you know, the the person who had acted most honourably throughout, I think, was probably Vicky. And she had the most right to some kind of satisfaction with, mm. with how it was concluded when it was in that controlled environment. And you just so frequently, they would cut to her face and she's like, and it was always like, are you hearing this? Mm. Am I crazy? Or is mm. this just mm. unconscionably mm. bad? And no one is responding to it in the right way. It's like the whole season, everything about it was just gaslighting Vicky. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's horrible. Gaslighting everyone. <laughs> Gaslighting the audience. Well, jo- Jono <laughs> actually used the term, which was interesting to see it kind of being used on, on TV. Yeah. Jono's done a lot of gaslighting and been gaslit. Mm. You know, the, yeah. the whole thing is, is... I feel I really turned on Ray, man, oh. in those last two episodes. We were on board with him for a while, but... Yeah, it's just like the only good that came out of it, really, is Anna and Jordan. Yeah. The shining <laughs> the end, light. Like, mm. The two... 
freaking weirdos. <laughs> oh, and the great friendship of uh, Chris, of Christopher and, and Rosie. <laughs> and Rosie, <laughs> who, by the way, is just an eyelash extensionist. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's he's yeah. he's I mean, he's ever. married lawyers. He's married meteorologists. Yeah, and Rosie's an eyelash extensionist. And and what Ray a is a bl- blind man. A blind. <laughs> not, oh, he not just a, puts up blinds. Blind he's not. Blind. He can go back to hanging blinds, and I'll go back to doing my creative stuff. <laughs> Such a pompous ass. What is hey, that creative yes. stuff, by the way? Oh, is he like a creative at an agency or something? T-shirt yeah. maker? I don't know. <laughs> Slogan <Spoken> man? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pants guy? <laughs> oh, pants guy. That, yeah, he does. He, he is incredibly creative with his trousers. <laughs> I will He's the director of his trousers as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no one else did it. Oh, anyway, good goodbye, Mavs. Bye, Mavs. You, were, you were kind of horrible the whole way through, but you really got quite horrible at the end, and yeah. I will not remember I your I will ten- say this, though. The corner was on fire for those last two episodes. It was so much fun, <laughs> live live yeah. commenting with everyone, just freaking out. People, like, opening bottles of wine across the country <laughs> and just, like, sharing photos. It was really, sure, it was really cool. something special. So thank you for the cornies for being, like, the real ones through the horror. <laughs> and, and, and word on the street is it's not coming back? Well... The spin-off yeah, like, so broke a story. The spin-off broke a story about New Zealand Today being cancelled, which is really like profoundly shitty. Seven days being reduced, which is not great either. Um, and maths being cancelled. Now, I had this sort of soft confirmed by by a source, but they didn't announce that. I don't think it's the kind of thing they ever would announce, it's, you know, it, because it you don't really have to. But um, I think it's manifest that between all the toxicity, all the bad publicity, and the really quite bad ratings, that that show is doomed. Um, so, yeah, goodbye, Mass, and hello, my restaurant rules. I <laughs> uh, love it. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, and Pitt, what a week for Raph. <laughs> I asked for the files this week, and I did not receive them. Oh, you haven't seen it? I haven't seen it. And should I we, should we, should I we just do it? I was like, we'll plow through files. real quick. We'll do, a, we'll do a good old fashioned five minute recap. No, it was the no, last of the time. first. It's fine. It's not your huh? fault. I actually don't remember much. It was great. It was great. It was a hell of a week, though. First first night was the Italians. Yeah. Which are where? Somewhere. They're in Nelson. Oh, uh, yeah. In a strip mall, again. Always. Um, but it looks real cool and authentic inside. I'm I'm going to Nelson in <gasps> early January. You gotta go. I'm going. I'm going to, I mean, if, if they're not shut down, but surely not in tourist season, I'm going to have the gnocchi. And, the gnocchi. Uh, and because it looked freaking Brava. delicious. And they're like, oh, it's a bit, what did he say, stodgy? It's like, hello, that's my that... favorite food <laughs> adjective. But also, Yum. isn't that it's kind, kind of, of like the defining and... texture of gnocchi? Yeah. 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 Come on. I just love, it was actually like the perfect antidote coming from all the horrible men on Married at First Sight to, I mean, I know that, is it Raph or Rafe? Raph. Raph. Raph has had his moments. <laughs> But Eight to eleven what of them. Joy, he <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's just so like amazed by everything around him. I think he really respects Susanna and her decisions. She's obviously the chef, so he has to. But he was just walking around like he pulls out this giant bin of just salad because they have pretty basic, like, and he's just like masculine. Wow, <laughs> and also like. Just so much hugging and kissing and tasting, and he's just a, he feels it all. He feels and it's everything. not bad, it's not toxic. I don't think it feels just like. I don't it's know. just close to like European men, yeah. right? They're just different. Yeah. I, I, I know, maybe I'm. I shouldn't forgive him for that thing that he said, but... <laughs> aren't, you a, aren't you Italian? I am, yeah, I am a quarter Italian, so maybe that's it. Really? I'm, I'm letting it slide, yeah. I thought you were just gram, so gramma, <laughs> from Italy. <laughs> Had a gelato stand and everything. But yeah, it was, it was amazing. But they didn't do, like, great, right? They got scored pretty close to the bottom. It was looking like either them or... Well, no, but they ended up sort of doing... Like, they ended up kind oh, of mid- mid-pack because they just completely killed dessert, That's which right. I was worried about because did it they didn't do, look did amazing. Did they do a tiramisu? They did. They did. <laughs> In a cappuccino cup. Oh, nice. <laughs> I loved it. Um, but, yeah, people went mad for it. They were, they, uh, yeah, they were, they were mad for the tiramisu. And what was the, the other thing? It was like a... Panna cotta. Pan, panna cotta. Oh, I like <laughs> panna cotta, too. I and mean, they're the just, two classics, right? Yeah. And they, they, they nailed them. Um, <clears throat> but also, I think you, you could sort of... 
like a lot of the the tension has been around them, but not at or through them, which which I think helped them when it came came to the scoring. Mm. Old mate Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he like ripped into PJ and oh, Rob. That's right. Okay, that's and, right. And the only thing I've seen about this week's My Restaurant Rules is in the corner, someone saying and like exclaiming, Daniel went full Daniel last night. So is that, <laughs> it? Is that what you're about to yes. say? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm listening. I can't even remember what he said though. I remember being sure. I remember just being like, "No one talks to Rob and PJ like that." <laughs> My friends from Littleton who just have the sauce at the power shell and they're just giving it a crack. <laughs> Go home, emo boy. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember exactly what he said. It was, it was kind of incoherent rage. But it was, <laughs> yeah, it was again. It was like Lemon Gate, the Lemon Party, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he say, he goes on these rants, which seem real fired up and like they're a thing. But when you actually try and listen to what Daniel's saying, you can't it's write just, it down. You can't it's just nonsense. It. And he's, um, but he's really fired up. He, it's just like drinking has become a mega thing on New Zealand reality this year. That's what it feels like. Is that mm. they used to have some sort of decor. Maybe now they've just got one camera and it takes a long time to get everything shot and they're just completely hosed by the end of it. But yeah, he just seemed, honest opinion, pretty smashed because he <laughs> just lit into this lovely bear of a man oh. who was obviously going to lose and go out the bottom. So his final moments on the show just were this <laughs> guy who beat him by three points with a shit meal just absolutely setting him on fire. <laughs> That's right. Oh. And then the next night mm. we go to back to Kati Kati <laughs> and... They've done a real funny makeover. <laughs> like the funniest three. makeover on, so ever. Do they, do they go around again now? Yeah. Raptor yeah, so they get cool. $20,000 to do up their restaurant and create like a new menu. So, oh, wow. <laughs> old mate <laughs> and Julia just wallpapered the whole thing with like forest photo. <laughs> I can't tell whether it's amazing or like the funniest thing it's really funny i thought it was really funny but raf loved it but i yeah <laughs> he was like oh, oh wow <laughs> oh wow <laughs> oh, <laughs> like the forest I didn't get to see this it sounds so good <laughs> oh it's it's real what it's just a great format like it's the, a great the way show. that the eliminations happen and the fact that it's like real money that is meaningful to them like it must 180 um, just in cash oh, yeah. alone, because there's the four twenties, and then you had the hundred, and that makes hundred and eighty. Yeah. And then you've got to have people shooting it, all the travel, the judges have got fees. Like this True. is, a, and there's no funding for this. It's like mm. a, this is big money from TVNZ on this thing. Yeah, again, it was um, like hit the kitchen, swearing straight away, freaking out at Julia, who but, was on desserts. Yeah, the new score out of one hundred and ten, they smashed. They smashed it. They did really, really well. They, so they, it's almost working. like they were foxing in the first round because they were just they went from like sort of s- embarrassing seventies country kitchen to mm. stuff that looked real fancy and modern was plated right. Mm-hmm. They did forget very... to season though. Remember, he forgot to season the bloody tuna. His face oh. when they really... he's like I fucked it, Julia. <laughs> fuck, fuck Julia. <laughs> and he was trying to figure out a way it was Julia's fault. Yeah, yeah. And the best she thing... was in charge of salt. <laughs> <laughs> salt bay. <laughs> Salt, hey. um, but he because uh, he was so cocky before that. They had that amazing mm. cut of him like, and she's like asking if he needs oh, to taste it, and he's right. like, "No, no, no, it's fine. It's fucking, yeah. fucking, fucking, <laughs> fucking perfect. Fuck, fuck you, Julia. Fuck, yeah. fuck, fuck Julia. Fucking perfect." <laughs> and then he, he hadn't seasoned it at all. Oh man, shit show. Oh Daniel. Still do well though. I'm just so glad it means we've got them around for a bit longer. They're in the finals. Yeah. There's no way that they get over that because so, they got like 77 out of 110. Mm. It's a mega score. So did you add the two scores together? Is that how it works from the first round? No, of they the brought game? in they brought in these like random people from yeah. something called Bay Bites, <laughs> Salt Bay. I don't know. No, it's, it's, it's in the Hawks Bay, I think, and that that's like a column in Hawks Bay today. It doesn't feel like. I think they might have be. Low on budget by this point. Mm. I mean, it's basically like bringing us in to do anything. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of level they've unfortunately stooped to. But it's just good, <clears throat> solid TV. Yeah, I Better really, really love it. Really love it. Okay. Okay, you're right, Jane. You can come back. All right. Well, kind we of. I can come back just momentarily. Minutes. I'm like, I feel like Duncan feel must feel like for all those many, many weeks where he's not watched anything. Mm. It's horrible, I, I don't do that. I'm a good boy now. Always did my homework. <laughs> You're amazing. I've changed. I know. 
Okay. Um, Tom, let's talk about, about the, the great show. Tom Otto. Okay. Well, I need to talk about the first line, which I wrote down, which is the first quote, which made me go, they couldn't make this show anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and if they could, they definitely couldn't say the same things that they used they to say. They definitely cannot say When they the have the 33 thing. women who are doing their catwalks for the first time in front of Colin and someone else, someone done, some fancy lady. And Angela Dunn. Uh, yeah, New Zealand's first ever supermodel. New Zealand's first ever yeah. supermodel. I don't know a lot about her anymore. Um, and Colin says, you hobble like a cripple. <laughs> I'm laughing I mean, in a like, horrible way, like when you accidentally laugh at a funeral. No, I know. Like, so, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, I know. So bad. I know. But it was so jarring. And I was like, this show to me, I thought in my head it felt like only yesterday. But when you watch it and you hear the things that everyone says and you see the things they do, it's like a different... It's a different century. I, everything about it is, is freaking insane. Like there's <laughs> multiple 16-year-olds who are out of school to mm-hmm. have their... Faces and bodies <laughs> judged by like, like old men and women, for, mm-hmm. and like they do it in the most harsh way. Like there is no hold back. The reason it works is because it's so self serious. Like these are people who are in fashion full time, take it super seriously. When someone has a bad freaking neck or forehead or something, mm-hmm. they have to critique it, and it's, yeah. but it's devastating. It really mm-hmm. lands. Mm-hmm. Particularly the swimsuit stuff for me was just where I was like, I could kind of, you know, in the context of, I mean, the fashion industry is just fucked, right? Like, that's just what it is. Yeah. But when there's like Christabel, who has only just turned 16, and Sarah Tetra is like, go and get your swimsuit on, girl, can't wait to see. But it's just so <laughs> yuck. It's just yeah. so they yuck. They really admire the, like, blossoming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and then she comes out and Sarah's like, schoolgirl only 16. And you're like, <gasps> And Chris oh, Cicerich is just like, oh, no, when another woman's out and he's like, save, save me. me. And you're like, ah! From what? Like, from, from yeah. there is no, there's two bad answers <laughs> to, to what save me might mean in that context. <laughs> and no good ones. Yeah. It's freaking incredible to rewatch. Yeah, it's, it's really something. Uh, how about um, the few hiccups? Oh, yeah, so who had the hiccups? Uh, Sarah, maybe? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, in the kind of backstory introducing her, Sarah Tetra says, you, you know, and you've been a th- f- you've had a few hiccups in your life. She has epilepsy. <laughs> That's the hiccup. And she used to inject herself with morphine. And like as a, a child, and she's 19. <laughs> just a few hiccups. Oh, my God, I'm laughing at the funeral again. I'm so sorry. No, no, we're all laughing it's, at the funeral. We're just shocked and awed that yeah. this thing was on TV. And none of that stuff was worthy of comment. That was just <laughs> life. That was just, I mean, in some ways, it's how far we've come. It does. Yeah. I mean, it's a good oh, thing yeah. that we, we no longer... It's really surreal things. to watch. Like, I would just highly recommend if you have access to the internet, which you do because you're listening to this podcast, and you can spare 45 minutes, it's just an incredible time capsule of so many things. The amazing integration of Havaianas on the beach. It's how they find out if they're like going into the top, whatever it is, 16. It's somehow harsher than like the it's final so rows. It's so harsh. They just have a shitty like shop stand of Havaianas which have people's names printed on them. And you just, all the girls are just scrambling through these jandals <laughs> trying to find their name on the jandals. I love like, the way and then half of them don't have jandals. The TV folk <laughs> come up with challenges and like things like that. It's just... It's something I feel is very unique to New Zealand. Yeah. The sorts of it things really that they come is. up with in reality television. I think oh, we should be just, proud. Well, oh, we should be so proud. I think, I, I think it's like one of the greatest episodes of reality TV. It's like just a stunning opening. They, I can't even imagine how much money they spent on it. Mm. I really want to like... So Kathy Neal is, is in the credits. John McDonald, who does wow. all of the... Um, uh, I was just with John McDonald. The, the TV3 like, comedy, uh, yeah. with the stars. Oh, real? Yeah. Well, so, like, with the, I feel like we can track down people who were involved in that who are now far enough away from the industry. They can just give us the tea. Yeah. But it's um, it's it's crazy money. Like, there's 33 of them in Queenstown, like the most expensive place maybe in the world, staying at the <laughs> Heritage Hotel, going jet. But it's like whatever you want to do. Mm. They just, just spend it and just shoot everything. There's so much B-roll of them in the pool and fucking about everywhere. It's it's just reeks of money and it's okay, so tight. Okay, but you know that it's so much of that was just sponsored, right? So much of that just like Air New Zealand and Heritage and Havianas and Hannahs and all of that, right? But 
back in the day when like lots of people were still watching television on the yeah. television. Mm. I mean, this mm. thing would have done half a mil easy. If that show would have made them a lot of money, there would have been a lot of people tuning in. It was just the good times. And Colin, I mean, we said this already, but Colin is just incredible. Like watching it, you're just like, this is what a reality show host is, yeah. you know? He's so, he's like an angel man. But also. I don't know where he came Dark from. Dark angel. Tenure. Chris Dark angel. angel. Chris angel. The Mind freak. not aged a day. No. No. If anything, His hair's changed. Yeah. For sure. Oh, he's know, rocking sure. a very long emo um, side sweep. Yeah. Oh, man. Hosanna and Tara Lee? That, <laughs> that is a rivalry. Like, why do they hate each other so much? Because Hosanna is like a little bit abrasive, abrasive, but she's also quite sweet. And Tara Lee doesn't seem like the kind of person who would get into a jam, but the two of them get together and mm. everything Tara Lee, sorry, everything Hosanna said fucks Tara Lee off royally. And she just like rips her. It's so amazing. And then. Hosanna's just last pick. She, this was actually one of the only things I ever put on you on my YouTube channel. Was like <laughs> when Hosanna gets picked, and she's so excited because she's she's last picked um, of the final thirteen, and she stumbles on her way down. They just cut to Tara Lee, just the greatest, one of the all time great smirks, just so <laughs> yes. happy that someone has fallen over. The physical comedy, you can't beat it. I really like um, how Sarah Teacher always roasts Tara Lee for having depressing eyes. <laughs> She's like, your eyes, Terrell Lee, I'm depressed. <laughs> it's just so intense. <laughs> the, every second comment is not an okay thing to say. And yeah, I think it's fair. On this po- podcast, I know at one point, hopefully I think near the beginning of the <coughs> podcast, we made a call that we were not like going to comment on things that people couldn't change about themselves. It's not their fault, right? So like physical appearance and so on. Mm. And yet this shows the exact opposite of that. It's like, this if all you it can't is. change, we're going to shit all over you for it. I mean, some of it's like how you hold yourself. You know, some of it, some of it you can and your walk and so on. But it really feels like they, in, they, they, they make no distinction between your forehead slash five head <laughs> and your walk because you haven't walked in heels or, you know, like your, your, your shoulders are big. Your, your, your dead, you know, oh, I mean, like, because it does feel like her sad eyes are part of Tara Lee's whole thing. Mm. She's like, you're, you're bumming me out. <laughs> yeah. Get away yeah. from me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, it's really amazing. Rebecca Rose went to my primary school. What? Yeah. Really? She grew up on the farm in South Wider Upper. That Look at been, her now. Alex, so you could have been in that. You're of the generation that I you could have, have been. You would have fallen in that beautiful age gap of what? Weird that I've never been to scouted 18. as a model. I always think about that. <laughs> the funniest thing about that is like I have a friend who that happens to. And when you go out in public with her and that actually happens and you're what like, oh my God, this is actually something that happens. What? People come up to her and go, do you have an agent? I'm an agent. I'm really interested in like... I've been there so for all that happening, and I'm just standing there like a little rat, little naked, <laughs> little naked mole rat, just like with a double chin, being like, yeah. The worst thing is it happened once in Ponsonby at this like homewares store. This woman ran from behind the counter, came up to my friend, and was like, oh, your model, what do you do? I'd, I'd be really interested in talking to you. And then she looked at me and she's like, you're cute too. Uh, at least she had. You're cute at least too. She you, though, <laughs> I don't right? want it. <laughs> I just wanted to die. I would take that. I'd take that. Yeah, I think you should take it. It was a pity thing. I was like looking at a keep cup. Yeah, it's felt like a piece I of shit. People like us, we have to take the pity <laughs> thing. <laughs> That's all we've got. My entire life, I've been called cute. I've never, my entire life, five foot two. And then from when I was announced as the new host on C4, I was like the pocket rocket. Bloody oh, pocket Fina. rocket. What Fina Angelou. Bloody, yes, exactly. Only. Nowhere near as cool. Anyway. <laughs> wow, this just went dark. <laughs> <laughs> this has gone so dark. <laughs> Are we going to have a like corner or a bloody cranny or? I think we just post the link and then we chat underneath it. Does that work? Oh, no, no, cranny. No, no, no. She's talking, oh. about, she's talking about other Oh, no, no, no. It's nothing. It's nothing. No. We're just I not going to do any of it. The thing is, that people love to hear the song. The NZNTM is the cranny. Because he's all bloody through, isn't he? Yeah. Max yep. has done nothing to deserve being on the show. No. This week. But we could, we could, I mean, we can sing the song. I mean, I could insert the tune if you want me to. What are you doing? What do you, I can't, I can't hear you guys. What are you, they're whispering. What did she do? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Well, oh. Max, he, let's no. play the stick. Play, play the stick. Play the stick. We got a thing. We got a thing. We got a thing. We got a bet. He's the stick. Like, 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 and subscribe. Max Key Corner. I know. I know. I'll never forget you. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Okay, what's the thing? So this week I interviewed an amazing, amazing woman in Dunedin who just yesterday, the day before, handed in a 16,000 word dissertation. 16 or 6? 16. Bloody hell. 16,000 word. I think I might have misedited that. We should oh, check. Oh, well, we'll check it. Um, about the YouTuber Logan Paul, who is probably most famous for vlogging next to a dead body in the suicide mm. forest in Japan mm. and getting cancelled for it, but still um, be- being incredibly successful and big attention hog. Um, so she wrote this incredible... I, I've kind of flicked through the dissertation. It's amazing. But I rang her and she talked about why she did it. But the most incredible thing is she sent a tweet tagging in Logan Paul saying, I've just done this dissertation. Um, please make a video about me. And he retweeted it. He's got 5 million followers. He's like a massive deal mm, mm. saying, um, I would, but I can't read. <laughs> and then he DM'd her and he's trying to do this like real subtle kind of what she thinks is like brand control, like... Be like, yo, <laughs> what's the dissertation about? Lo, 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 yeah, yeah. yo, lo gang. <laughs> and she's just like losing her mind because now she feels like she's become a part of this whole, the attention economy of the online world, which she's just been writing about. And now she's a part of it. Anyway, she also works for Critic in Dunedin. Mm. And she last year told me that she paid, she paid Max Key $25 to pull her ponytail at a meet and greet. <laughs> She, she is. Now, I don't know if that she paid twenty five dollars for the meet and greet, and then and then requested, and then her. asked. Yeah, he definitely did it with consent. It was asked for by her, um, and he thought it was kind of a, just a funny joke. I guess. I really want to. Th- I I really like to think that she handed over twenty five cash after and said, the ponytail. You know what? To and do. then he was well, like, <laughs> "I know. I I, 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 have know. <laughs> I have access to a lot of money, but I could do with this twenty five. You know." <laughs> Yeah. Oh, who doesn't want 25? Those Especially in Dunedin. Oh. Can we still have that merch that Mad bought from, brought home from her meet and greet, the bandana and stuff? Maybe she's got it in her Surely. personal collection at home. That's, anyway, that's decent. That's just mean, a great a story. It's a great... There's a big lead up to, to the, but it was good payoff. Good yeah, well, it's just it's the Logan Paul stuff's really interesting as well. I know we're running out of time, but I know a lot of cornies are into YouTubers and all that kind of stuff. So I would seek out the story on the spinoff. It's a cracking interview because she's an amazing woman. Um, <gasps> I feel bad for bringing up an article in a tribute to the spinoff when it was for another media outlet. No, it's, it's really fine. Like, it's, it's Emily like, Wright. It's his family. It's mm. muddied my whole podcast experience since that moment. Oh my gosh, no, Jane. Jane. Jane, it was sure just a funny it's joke. It's just a joke. Everything's just a joke here. You know that. I know, including that. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got you. Yeah. We're all actually la- we're laughing. Uh, <laughs> Heartily. Oh, <laughs> right, that's good. It's a short pod this week. Only only an hour long. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's really good. Bite size. Join the spinoff members. Remember, if you want, if you go to the spinoff.co.nz forward slash real pod. Then you get you not only get all of the cool spinoff member stuff, but you also get a, uh, an exclusive real pod badge. It's sick. It's real sick. Can I have one? At, mm, are you a member? Mm. Just uh. Uh yep. Yep. Mm, just, <laughs> just what about that? Wrong. Remember that email I sent you earlier today. Little bit of a lie. Just remember that email. Mm. I sent, remember email I sent you earlier today. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, no, and if it. you want to come to the Christmas party in Auckland, send me an email, alex at thespinoff.co.nz. It is filling up, and I am not joking around. And there is two VIP names on the guest list already, and Count more. Them. More One, coming. Two. <laughs> is there going to be a quiz? Well, you wouldn't you your, like to know? You I would like to know. I'd like to know. But okay, I'll I ask think you Alex just said that. <laughs> <there would be. laughs> hey, it's been lovely. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Alice. Oh, oh, you're brilliant, Tina. Yeah. yeah. Tina's. Go on, I'll turn her. Hold on, hold on. Just say hi. Hi, Alice. I didn't even know. Oh, Look hi, at that Alice. trademark two handed wave. <laughs> and thank you, Nando's. Thank you, Nando's. Thank you, Colin. The king of the chicken, as the slogan goes. Um, oh, lovely. Bye time. now. Goodbye. <laughs> bye now. Bye to all. <laughs>
Are you curious about how business can be better? I'm Simon Pound, and I host Business is Boring, a podcast where I caught it all with some of the most interesting people in entrepreneurship, commerce, and making things happen. Tune in to Business is Boring every Tuesday, brought to you by the Spinoff Podcast Network in partnership with Spark Business Lab. Do you find it hard staying optimistic with all the financial news in the media? I'm Bernard Hickey, and on my podcast, When the Facts Change, I'm here to help you navigate the ever-changing landscape of economics in Aotearoa. So join the conversation every Friday on When the Facts Change, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network in partnership with KiwiBee. The Spin-Off Podcast Network.